I'm Scott from Pushy6. I'm here at Con Expo 2020 at the Topcon booth. I'm here with Oscar. We're going to talk a little bit about what's new with Topcon and what's new at Con Expo this year. What's new would be uh, the automatic excavator. That really has been something that a lot of people have been asking questions about. And what I found out was that a lot of people, automatic excavator, wait a minute, I don't yeah. want this thing doing something it's not supposed to. I found out yesterday it was about controlled automatic. So when I'm ready for this thing to be to go into automatic, I'm still in control. I still tell it what it's going to do, what it's going to do. That was a big game changer for this new automatic excavator system. It's been now, fun. I've had the chance to run one. The joysticks adapt to the dirt and the material that you're digging. The whole experience was amazing and yeah, it does a lot for you, but at any time you can pull back on the other stick, lift up, you have control where you're placing the yeah, dirt. Yeah, you're in control. Full control. People don't need to be scared of this new machine, this new technology. Exactly. It's amazing and I see it helping uh, a bunch of people be able to do jobs that they couldn't even do before. Exactly. The term that I heard yesterday that kind of hit me was, uh, we're going to take new operators and make them good. We're going to make good operators great with a system like that. Absolutely. Now in the booth, we have a race car back here. Yeah. What is that about? Yeah, but first thing I was surprised to see is uh, why do we have a race car here? First off, that's an F3 race car, and we have professional race car driver James Rowe Jr. Uh, behind us. He's sponsored by Topcon, and he's actually um, been a part of several projects where they've gone through professional race courses and resurfaced the racetrack itself. They've done that with Smooth Ride. So through Smooth Ride, um, I, I love the way I heard this the other day, where before I have an operation, I'm going to do an x-ray. Well, through Smooth Ride, to be able to go down the race course that's all rutted up and, and, and potholes or whatever extreme the race surface is, to measure exactly how it is with a Smooth Ride system, scanning and creating a 3D model of the poor race course, design what you want it to be, mill what you need, pave what you should, and inspect at the end. That is exactly why this race car is here, is to show that we want these race tracks to be as smooth as possible for 200 mile an hour racing, and also airports, where it costs a whole lot of money per second to shut down an airport. Smooth ride, kind of, having the car here shows us the result of that. Rather than talking about smooth ride, show us that race car drivers rely on it and airports uh, depend on it. I've had a chance to see the smooth ride in action. Um, it was in Nevada, actually, yeah. um, at a demonstration. With that milling, so you can now mill at Very different well. depths. Yeah, exactly. Was that possible before? Uh, it was, but a whole lot more manual, uh, seat of the pants engineering. Gotcha. And now we're a whole lot more, um, well, we're taking not just specialized labor, but now any folks with a little bit of training can go do the same task. We've got the milling program in it. We brought it over from the scan truck over there, washed it through the software to build the road design and put it right into the machine. Now, in a lot of cases, we're going to run site link on this, so we can dump it directly from the office right to the machine without ever having to come out here, hook up to it or anything. It also gives the ability at your office to see what the operator sees. So if there's a problem or a correction and you're watching it, you can see it sometime before it gets to be a problem. I'm seeing a bunch of smaller contractors mm -hmm. now adopt. You're exactly tech, right. right. We've so seen the same thing that when we've come out here three years, this is why I was counting, it's my fourth Con Expo. And for the last three, pretty predictable, you know what you're getting into, big, huge, large firms, they have massive existing fleets and they may want to convert or pilot uh, changing manufacturers of their, of their, on their machines. 
now for this kind of expo, we're seeing it's kind of the middle, smaller to middle sized firms. We had a gentleman yesterday come by and he said, I have a machine, a, a dozer, a grader, an excavator, pause. And he said, what can I do? What do you guys have to help me? And then here's what made my eyes open. He said, because I see everybody else around me using this type of auto technology on their machines. What can I do? Give me a quick demonstration. So maybe this 2020 Con Expo is the year of the, of the middle to small firms. It's kind of taking on that theme. I think they kind of have to or they can't compete. Like we're getting at that level now where you can't even bid on jobs if you don't have a fleet equipped with yeah. machine control. Yeah, it's what was, that efficient. Exactly, what was new is now normal and the smaller contractors know that and they're, they're, they're interested in looking for it. Yeah, yeah, which is great. I've been pushing machine control since 2007. Yeah. So it's great to see the public in general understanding, seeing you know the efficiencies of it and investing in it. Yeah, the last thing I heard about it was it's almost like 3D printing, but on for the earth. I design exactly what I want in the software and then actually go carve and cut and fill exactly what I design, no more, uh, less error and faster. So in the booth, what's new? Yeah, what's new is what's not. Uh, meaning, what's not here is that in years past, we had this booth filled with equipment. So if I was trying to talk to you about something, it was right in front of us, and we talked about this thing and the specifications of it. Whereas this year, we have these technology touch murals, where we have the whole scene of a project site for paving, for earth moving, for surveying, for vertical construction. So for the various people that walk up, and they are varied. I mean, there's so many different types of folks that walk up. We can change the scene to, for that conversation yeah. and talk about exactly um, who they are and what will best benefit them, but also uh, elevate the conversation. Rather than talking about a total station and, a, and, and machine control, which is important, yeah. more about how does data flow on a project site and keep everybody informed along the way. That's what's different. Not having products and having these murals to, for a conversation. Now back there, I see a uh skid steer yeah. has machine control on it. Yeah, it's really odd to see a skid steer in here, but for the skid steer, we have this new line of products at Topcon called MC Mobile. And with that, it's we are always known at Topcon for dozer, grader, excavators, huge machines to make them faster and smarter, are obvious. But this is more for the low end. For the skid steer, we took the GPS receiver and two of them on this little skid steer, and instead of having a Topcon control box, it's an Android device, Android tablet. So somebody can have their own, bring your own device in the in the cab of the skid steer, go out, measure a few shots with a rover, climb back in, use an Android tablet, and actually start to uh, do earth moving with these smaller machines. So that way Top can have a high-end, medium, and now low-end solution for all machines. Right, right, right. Now, I need to ask you a question, because this is one of my favorite things. Augmented reality. No. What's going on with that? Yeah, so right now, uh, to be able to, we have a solution with magnet system where we can have a design and put that on the, so we go out, let's just say, start from the beginning. Fly a drone, and, and here's what the side is. Lay the design on top, pause. Go outside with an uh, uh, Apple iPad tablet and actually see the design and move around, zoom in, zoom out. Well, what we really find that beneficial, it's a nice picture, but so the crews on site all understand what we're about to do, and that so perhaps neighbors to the site say, I don't want this to be, I don't want this construction going on. Then they can visualize and say, oh, now I see it's not so bad. The finished well, we, product. Finished product, and then, whereas in the old days, you may have had like charts and, and, and printouts of what the design may look like. It makes like. no sense to the average person. Bingo, it makes no sense to them. Now they can go out there and visualize with augmented reality see exactly what it's going to be and get a better picture of what's about to happen. <laughs> what's next for TopCon in 2020? Yeah, um, connecting the site was what we've done for the last six to eight years. Connecting the site from manager, field, and office, we've achieved that. That's normal now, as you said. Now the next step is, is uh, frankly, where could we go next? Uh, uh, um, to be able to integrate different types of data sets where you have a drone, a total station, a scanner, all these different sensors doing different tasks, but in one software product, in one suite, informing the manager along the way and keeping field and office informed. A, a dynamic project site, I think is probably where we're going next. Yeah, and I think the, the key is to have one program, one software. That's right. You don't have to get software over here and then this. Yeah. 
stuff yeah. over here, it's all one thing. On different versions that have right. errors, those days are gone. As I look around the show, I'm seeing a lot of new tech. Some that I like are apps, there's apps for everything. Yeah. yeah. Now, what does TopCon have going on that's anything app based? Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, one of them would be SiteLink. So SiteLink version two, as we're calling it, um, is a, a website, web service rather, so where the manager can stay informed of all the different project sites, plural, that he has, see the machines and the operators that he has on site, and visualize what's going on. It's not about anything technical, this is for the manager to be able to see progress uh, as it's happening on, on site, but also the Haltrick app, where within version, site link version two, he does a geofence. He has a satellite image and says, here's my project site, click, click, click. Yeah. And then as the when we have the haul truck app on the mobile device, when we pull in, you've broken, you've come in that fence, you're you're coming in, get loaded up, leave, you break that fence, you're gonna do your dump and and vice versa. And that's how you keep track. Exactly, keep track. Yeah. So no more standing there with a clicker counting yeah, trucks, yeah. keeping it as efficient that's as genius, you can. actually. <laughs> exactly. I've always kind of wondered how you could keep track of something like that, and you just explained. Thanks, Scott, for coming and talking with us. What do you say we go check the booth out? Let's do it. All right.